Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Uh, so let me, just, let me just give this to you here for a second so we can get the audience involved here a little bit. And, and uh, you know, Rolando, you could take this. I know Kevin, <laughs> Michael, either one. Who, I, I don't have to tell Kevin to jump in, but I'm just saying. Uh, I carry my revolver in single action says, uh, what if you see someone raiding your house and taking all your guns? Would you let them? Well, common sense will tell you. Hold on, Katie. Let me say something really quick, brother. <laughs> <laughs> man, common sense, man. Come on, dude. Like, if somebody comes and take... I'm, I'm assuming everyone here and on this live, because I know every single one, especially Katie and I know Hank and uh, you guys, will, if somebody's coming to your house, I mean, common sense, you're going to shoot them if they're taking your guns. Mm -hmm. If you have one, I mean, they're taking all your guns. That's just yeah. common sense. But, uh, I mean, Jesus. Yeah. I don't no. know, Katie. <laughs> that's yeah, that's so, how this, you feel. This is, where, this is where I tell people you don't want to get into an intellectual uh, game about judo and implying laws. <laughs> So understand this, the presentation of a firearm in any situation, especially if you're in a commission of a crime, right, or a confrontation or something, the, of a, the, uh, the presentation of a firearm is immediate deadly force. Here's why. One, it can be used as a bludgeon, right? So you can strike somebody with it, right? Two, it instills fear. People are naturally fearful of guns. And for the third reason, because a gun is designed to change the integrity all right, and the structure of things that it is aimed at. Mm -hmm. It shoots bullets, things change when it hits it, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So in that particular scenario, if somebody is stealing guns, right, they have guns, and they're in a commission of a crime, they have already brought deadly force into the situation, thus I can respond with deadly force. Please don't come with something better. Yeah, okay? so. Now, this is, I'm also the same guy when people, and I saw somebody else ask a question about the rooftop Koreans. Look, let me explain something to you guys. I am the same dude that when the, the the spread of Ferguson, right? We had a guy today in Minneapolis say, oh, now that we're done with the city, we're about to go out to the suburbs. Let's see what y'all do, right? That happened here. That that They did that, right? And when it got, it actually came in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. When I say in my neighborhood, I mean on my damn street, all right? Guess what I did? I went outside, no bullshit, full kit, slung rifle, seven mags for it, a fully loaded handgun with four extra magazines. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? Six cars got loaded back up and they left. Don't play <laughs> me for stuff. Don't play me for a bitch. What I am telling you is it is a way to apply everything you do. Did I start lighting them up because they were jumping in my neighbor's yards? No. Why? Because all I, for all I know, they're going there stealing hubcaps off people's cars. They can't be shot over property. Mm -hmm. I don't hate criminals more than I love my freedom. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Mm -hmm. Right? I can despise the sin, but I don't hate you more than I love it, me. Kevin, now, it's called nuance. Yeah. It's called yep. nuance. We are capable of higher smart, thinking. <laughs> Right. Well, go ahead. Know, go ahead, Ro. Let me let's let Ro get yeah. in here because I've got another got, comment that we're going to get an opportunity to talk about. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I've always been taught you got to do what's tactically sound. So you're in your house yeah. and your car is outside getting broken into. You have to think to yourself, can I? Am I going to go out there? First of all, I don't know how many dudes are out there. Second of all, I don't know if one dude's trying to jack my car so that the other guy can go through the back door. So if I go confront this other guy, first of all, there may be more than one. So even if I go out with with an AR-15, I don't know. I'm walking into an unknown situation. And then I also leave my family members inside the house who I'm supposed to protect as well, vulnerable because as a defender, I have left them in there. Mm -hmm. Now my wife, she can defend herself, but still it's better to have two guns than one. So it's better to stay where you're tactically sound and not inject yourself in the situation unless you must. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't know what you're walking into. Yeah, right, okay. Um, and let me uh, let me get this other comment in here. Razor JB says the definition of looting and what's going on isn't totally the same. Still doesn't mean shoot anyone, but when they're throwing flaming bottles in the business with looting, critical thinking is a must. Yeah, good point. Throw, good point. throw, throw a bomb at me and see what I do. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 yeah that that's a weapon. I mean, KD was someone just a, a gun, but if you throw it. I seen I seen uh I did see this on the news a gentleman had a 
or like some gentleman, but he had a, a man had a a, a, wine, a a alcohol bottle lit it on fire. Mm-hmm. That's a that's excuse my language. That's a goddamn bomb, man. It's a like, weapon. You yeah. hit somebody with that, yeah. you can do serious damage. I mean, mm-hmm. in that case, I mean, I see people actually open carrying their firearms and stuff like that. In that case. You do have to. I believe you have to take fire in self-defense. I mean, that is a self-defense situation. You don't need a gun, a gun to actually take a shot. You know, to yeah. to stop. You know, bad. and I mean, and, that, that's, and that's just to illustrate thing. something, like I mean, I didn't see. I haven't seen every all the the footage here, but I know there's been uh, footage running on uh, uh, p- uh, news reports, right, of the protesters going after police cars. Mm-hmm. Right now, I yeah. know some people. Th- yeah. These things have. I think how many people have? There's at least one, one or two people that have died in this. Right, at least one. I last think. time I heard, one person died. It yeah. could be two, but the last time I heard, one person. Yeah, I don't know how. Many, I just know one. Person yeah. Died. So let's just think. Just look at, uh, at what happens with the police cars. That they're going after police cars, which these guys are armed. They've got weapons in there. They're trying to move away from people, right? And these guys are smashing police cars and doing all that kind of stuff. You know, they could they they could, you know, be well within their rights to get out and get into a firefight with people, but they're they're choosing to get the hell out of there. Right? I mean, if I throw a, if I throw a brick at your head and you have a gun, will you defend yourself against me? Yeah. Absolutely, you should. Yeah. So if if I, I think the problem is that when you see and let's just say these are some of the patient good cops that are in the cars, right? Mm-hmm. And we see people throwing bricks and all kind of crap through those windows. They can respond if they if they and yeah. they will be justifiably responding, right? right? Now their command staff might be giving them different orders, right? right? But by the law, they would be totally okay. There was even a situation in LA uh, where one of the guys on the highway was they were standing around a patrol car. The officer slowly accelerated to get away because they were busting his windows and you know trying to get into the car. And a guy flipped off the car and I think he hit his head and went unconscious. Yeah. The second squad car behind him pulled up. And you could tell he pulled up and angled his car. He wanted to get out and check on it. Yeah, he want, they wanted right? to help him. Then they started smashing that guy up. Smart, smart, went. They didn't get out and shooting. Mm-hmm. They drove off. Look, guys, here's here's the real here's the real thing. You got to separate. This is when you separate what you would do in your emotions and talking to your boys away from real life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you are looking for more reasons to shoot people than not, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. This is this is not. And if you think that okay. Start shooting, start shooting looters. Not people throwing Molotov cocktails. Not that. Now, I ain't talking about that stuff. I'm talking about, let's go to the TV candy bar guy, right? You shoot them in that city and then see what those Democratic leaders do. See what kind of gun control starts coming up. See them, mm-hmm. right? You just can't, if you're, if you're finding reasons to go out shooting people, you're being silly. And this is even from, you can look at some of the most tactically trained dudes in the world. Many of them I talk to on a regular basis that have been in actual war zones. You know how many times they didn't depress the trigger? Yeah. Well, listen. Like, come on. This got to be a little smart. So, look. We all know this. We all know this is a lot of bravado amongst uh, men. This is something I could say clearly is a very man thing. Right? There's a lot of bravado amongst us. In the gun community, there's bravado. But there's talk, and then there's reality. You know? Exactly. Now, there might be some issues... I think sometimes we cross these little weird issues when, you know, if something happens, uh, let's say something like in this situation happens to a black guy and there's some other people looking at it and like, oh, you know, this is not how this is not how I would react to that. But you guys are all caught up in your feelings because because it's a black guy. No, I think that we are past that. This is 2020 that we're in. And we could be more nuanced, right? We could be more nuanced than this. Like we get this. When I looked at uh, when I looked at what was going on in Michigan with those guys going armed into their state house, I wasn't upset by that, you know. And there were people like, "Oh, we gotta stop this. We gotta put a stop to these guys being able to do do that." No, I didn't say, "Hey, we should put a stop to that." That's what this was. That's what this is all about. I'm pretty sure I saw on on your, I think it was you, Kevin. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but there were some there were some black guys that are armed protecting stores and things like that, right? Yeah, I put that in today. Yep. Yeah, yep. They yeah, they're standing outside the businesses armed. Yeah. So the thing is, there's a balance. We're looking at this in a balanced way. We're for so for example, not only black people are upset by this thing. No. You know, now I saw on social media, I saw that there were some people not in our community, 
But, you know, other social media comes across my radar. And there are other people of color that are mad at their white friends if they feel like they're not responding to this thing. And I'm thinking to myself, are, are you even plugged into what's going on? It's not just black people upset about that, right? This thing happens in all different facets to everyone, but sometimes we take it as like, it gets personal, right? It gets personal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if we see someone that looks like us, we get more upset. Sometimes if it doesn't look like you, you're less upset. But honestly, at the end of the day, you have to, you have to try to be more nuanced than this and understand what like freedom really means you know and, and one of the one of the things i could say to illustrate this and it always happens you guys could tell me whether or not this has happened to you people say well why is he resisting you know when the, when this happens what's the matter with you why do you got to resist something and i and i get that and i understand that i've been through my own situations but I know how other people that, that I have as friends, how they react if they get pulled over by police officers or someone tries to push them around. So to say that, okay, well, you know, maybe you just shouldn't resist is not, it's, to me, it's not a valid thing. You guys could tell me what you think. I don't think you should try to get into a fight with a police officer or anything like that, but there's nothing wrong with asking questions and if we live in a world where the person who looks like me can't ask questions or get or, or or say anything to someone, but someone else could do it, that's that's where we have a problem. That's the crux of a problem here that a lot of people are trying to get folks out there to understand that this happens. Right or wrong? I agree. Uh, you do have to. We definitely have to stand up for ourselves and speak. Uh, I feel like that's a. Uh, I would. I would definitely say that's a problem. I feel like, especially with the youth and just the black community in, in general, uh, just because we were taught to fear, you know, the police. You know, even growing up, you know what I'm saying. I, and my situation may be slightly different, but even then, a lot of my friends, you know, and I try to educate them. You know, they were taught in their household. You know, when you see police, try to you know shut mm -hmm. up and listen. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing. Yes, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. I just, I personally, I don't necessarily, I really don't agree with that. I feel like uh, I was taught differently. Uh, I was taught, to, you know, speak up for myself. If something's not right, it's not right. Uh, you know, understanding and uh, and that's just a lack of knowledge. Also, uh, you know, not under, not knowing your rights. You know, you'd be surprised how many uh, African Americans even uh, in, that I sell firearms to who come here didn't even know they can even own a gun in this state. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's besides the point, but still, mm -hmm. not knowing your rights, you know, it's it, it it's, it's it's bad. You know, yeah. just educate. You, you got to balance it. I, I mean, I remember I when, it, the, the, like, so obviously I have a video out of when I got pulled over, right? Yeah, I when, watched that like two times. <laughs> when a lot of my white, so this is to like really bring home the Thank point God. I'm trying to make to you guys. When a lot of my friends who are white, even white police officers saw that, they were like, mm -hmm. why the hell did you let these guys do that? <laughs> what was up with this why don't you you know and and i'm trying to say like listen i i understand what my rights are if you listen to that you can hear me talk, saying things to them but still trying to walk that line of not pushing this over the line you know and this is a thing like we are living in a thing like if if i have to if i have to be super extra careful but if you're in that position you're gonna be like hey what the hell's wrong with you guys then there's a problem there's ultimately a problem, right? Yeah. And in that situation, I watched that video. Like I said, I watched it 10 mm -hmm. times. I mean, that video, I do think your situation was slightly different mm -hmm. because there was already two guns. There, there was already, well, I'll say two guns, but there was already a gun on this side being in your hand, in your possession. Mm -hmm. There was already two guns in the you know equation at that point. So right. it's kind of like when there's guns involved, you kind of got to, at that point for both people, even yourself, even the officer, you kind of got to, everybody got to, chill down you know put those egos aside because that can be a very dangerous situation i mean yours was just very from what i remember it just it was it was very intense very fast you know it kind of like it was a lot of steps and things like that i felt like the officer uh you know just like bypassed so i mean i felt like you did the right thing but uh even in that situation i do feel like you stood up for yourself and you asked a lot of questions you just didn't you know just give yeah. in, you know. But we, but, but we have to, we have to. The the point I'm trying to make about it is we kind of have to walk the line. Now, if you have to walk the line, mm -hmm. if one mm -hmm. person doesn't have to walk the line and then another person has to walk the line, there's obviously a problem, right? Right. 
There's yeah. an issue. There's an issue. So when I see people in in like the gun community, for example, getting mad because like we're talking about it, I'm like, oh, I don't listen. We're all the same. We're all Americans. There's no color. Yeah. That is the dream <laughs> that Martin Luther King had and died for. It doesn't exist yet. No. Nah. Okay. We want it to be like that. We're working for it to be like that. It's not exactly like that. Hey, I'm not mad about it. I'm the person who has to, who lived through that. And I get it from people who, you know, who I know, who like, I know that, like I said, there's white people who are mad when they see that. Like, well, you don't have to, you don't have to let those guys talk to you. So there's an issue here. We have to work through that, but we all have to think about what's going on and try to be nuanced about it. So when people say like, hey, maybe this guy shouldn't have resisted or he shouldn't have been, I, I don't know whether or not, you guys will have to tell me whether or not he actually had anything in his system. I'm not sure. Did, Kevin, did he have anything? I mean, even if he did. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we've gotten yeah. the, the, medical, the uh, medical coroner's report yet. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and, and what he did was, I, mean, I think he they were saying he tried to pass like a fake bill or something like that. Yeah. It was a fake $20 yeah. bill. And the fake last 20. time I heard the bill, the last I heard the bill wasn't even fake. Right. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. People, there's people who say, well, you could just avoid, you, you know, he could have avoided this. No, there's no. a, there's a line that you cross when you're dealing with another human being and you have their life in your hands. Okay. <laughs> And there's lots of people who commit crimes and they don't wind up dead because they committed the crimes. We all look at live PD or whatever. We see people running, people fighting, <laughs> and people don't die because they do that. That's part of your job as a police officer to deal with that. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.